Hello there, everyone. This is Infinity. It is 9.33 here in the Pacific on the 13th of April. A lot of ones and threes going on here. I hope you've had a great day. It was Monday. Okay, enough of that. Hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for being here, guys. We are bringing to you tonight episode number 65 of the podcast. A little announcement here at 9.36 p.m. Sorry for the noise. That's my kitty. Hey. 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 Sorry, guys. Um, she just got really playful. She was playing with a moth, and now she's she's gonna sit, I think. Would you please stop? stop? She's looking at me like, why? Why should I? Like, what's your problem, lady? <laughs> All right, you guys. So, uh, 9:36 in the p.m. here on the 13th. Seriously, baby? Okay. <laughs> I got her out of there. Sorry about that. Alrighty. So, here we are on Monday. It is... Uh, our moon is at 57.9%. And so, tomorrow, um, overnight and tomorrow, we're getting into our 50% time of the month and that is always a pivotal day it is also coinciding with the landing day of our stargate it's the 14th tomorrow you guys so our stargate started on the 4th so 4-4 of 2020 and then we're going 10 days to 4-14-2020 so that is tomorrow and uh At the same time as that, we have for our symbol for tomorrow, for our symbols, we have um, Ganesha and and Wisdom. So Ganesha is, um, we're going to get into more about that here in a second and who Ganesha is. But 
the characteristics for tomorrow is day of education, knowledge, and wisdom, a day for books, archives, information, a day of symbols, magic, secret knowledge, as well as new ideas and original new solutions. Uh, a day of spiritual and creative renovation, a favorable day for writers, poets, and scientists. Meditation, you can concentrate on the knowledge that interests you. And um, the moon is in Capricorn, and and uh, we're gonna take this a step further. Well, let's see which way we're we gonna go with this. As my ears start to pop because we're <laughs> my cat. No, I'm not playing with you. I'm not playing with you. I'm busy. She's trying to be cute and entice me to play with her. I'm not playing with you right now. I'm sorry. Mommy has mommy has work to do. Don't be mad. She's like <laughs> screw your work. I want to play. Huh? I love Beck. You're so adorable. If you want to see baby, take a look at my Instagram. I posted her being really cute. Um, flirting with me and outside <laughs> she she didn't know I was there videotaping her and when she saw me she's like oh and she got all funny about it, it was really adorable and I, th <laughs> I thought she knew I was there so it surprised me that I surprised her you know <laughs> it was really really cute anyhow Let's get into, let's go, and this, we'll go this way around it. We'll get into Ganesha. Also, Ganesh, Ganesha, it's um, Hindu and from India. Also known, so Ganesha, also known as Ganesha. So here we go. This is, I'm reading directly out of my book, Archangels and Ascended Masters, A Guide to Working and Healing with Divinities and Deities by Doreen Virtue. And... Um, this book is fantastic. I was guided to this on the full moon and at that time, El Moria came out and we've been working with him these past two lives. This time around, um, I was guided to Ganesh, Ganesha, just because, <laughs> exactly at 727 in here, uh, because like I just said, with the moon, the symbols are Ganesha and wisdom. So I was like, oh, interesting, Ganesha. And then I was guided to dig deeper into that, and I did. And then um, for those of you who, um, who are like, oh, that sounds familiar, but I'm not exactly sure what that is. It's, this, it's the Hindu... Uh, God with the elephant head. We're going to get into that right now, but that is, you know, the visual. So go ahead and Google that visual and get that in your, in your mind. And, um, as we get into Ganesh, also known as Ganesha, <clears throat> I'm going to read directly from the book and excuse my, um, I don't know if I sound a little, whatever, if I, I'm a little raspy. I mean, we just went through a really intense activation yesterday in the live that I did. And, um, and it was to implant shielding in our, in our lower backs and in our chest. And we're dealing with a lot of like integration with that. And then also feeling the collective with, with all the COVID stuff and, um, there's just a lot going on energetically. So as soon as I get done with this, and this is not going to be a long one, I promise you. As soon as I get done with this, I'm getting into the bath and, um, I've been called in there for a meeting with, um, <laughs> with my, with my team, with my spirit tribe, my team, my brothers and sisters, and, um, also for self healing so I can clear out this energy. And we're supposed to be doing that. I'm really intentionally spending at least 30 minutes in the bath or shower. Those of us who did this activation yesterday, if you did not do it, I suggest you take a look at that meditation. It's not a long one. I think it's like, oh shit. I don't even know. Maybe it is. I honestly don't even know. <laughs> I really don't even know, but it was, um, but we did it twice. We did it on the full moon and then we did it, uh, yesterday as well for Easter. So El Moria came through to, uh, so two of us did it, um, did it twice essentially. The second time was just to, 
um, deeper integrate and play with the energies of the shields and um, they're encoded with our with our very specific soul co soul code and Merkaba activations all integrated into them that's like etched into them it's just it's it's really quite cool it's for grounding and shielding and um it's just to not it's just to help you just take things easy peasy and not be so triggered and just be more grounded and at this time especially for for what he calls light bearers light war light light warriors light uh and i love that word actually light bearers um light workers is is what it's kind of known as mostly i guess um and it's because these spots for light workers light bearers is really uh susceptible to 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 being overused and overworked just because that's kind of how it is for the collective and um it's also a point of of like extraction of energy for under if you're under psychic attack that's a, those are those are the two places where you're going to be hit or extracted from is your is like that lower base energy it's like your sexual energy we'll get more kind of into that in in relation to um ganesha and also the devil card which we got into um da, 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 where let's see that oh yeah that was just my last po podcast well i did it a couple of times we, we we got into the devil card a couple of times um episode 56 was part one energy update and the oh wait was that it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um part six part 56 six part or sorry episode 56 part one energy update the devil the ego our reality and COVID um COVID-19 so and then the, and then there's actually two parts to that I get into in in episode number 57 the introduction to um the tarot um and why it is so powerful and that was the introduction in my textbook the Kabbalistic tarot um, so I read directly from the book and it, it really, it really explains a lot how and why the, um, it says an introduction, why it's so powerful. It's exactly what I was just going to say. It really explains why the tarot is so powerful and why so many people gravitate towards it or to it for, for help and guidance, especially if you're working with somebody who really is connected, it can be extraordinarily insightful into what's going on. Um, and not only for me, not only uh, the the tarot, but particular oracles too, but they're not connected to the, the tree of life and the Kabbalah like, like the tarot is. The tarot is set up um, connected to all of to, to the all the branches in the tree of life so so it's really interesting um all the reading that comes out of this book and I did that episode uh the introduction episode number 57 so that was the tarot and introduction why it's so powerful so it is a long one but um it's it's really one of those things where you think you you know like you might think you know about tarot but like I thought I did with the different things I'd read but it wasn't until I got into this book and I and it's and it's integrating the tree of life and all of these different parts of our journey and and, and the way that he he breaks it down and I, I'm, I'm not saying that I understand all of it so it really opens up more doors for you to like look deeper into things on a spiritual level because it's basically a map on how to ascend through life how to go through how to go through life and how to transcend different different um levels and layers and corridors within this matrix that we're in and it puts it together in a way that really needs to be experienced you can talk about it but 
it's not until like you have seen it in in practice and work and you put it together that you're like oh wow holy shit this is like a thing for sure and um and why it is such a such a popular thing so anyway without getting too much into that just listen to that podcast (laughs) and uh what else here um the other thing was the uh the again the episode that I just updo- uploaded yesterday or on sorry on the well it was the middle of the night on the 12th so it was episode 64 the tree of life the 15th key the devil and I say in that episode um once again we get into the book this time the devil card <laughs> Uh, not that we were done with it. And I said, trust me, if you think you know the devil or the devil card, I bet you'll find yourself seeing them from a new point of view and maybe yourself too, because that is what the devil is meant to do. Um, and we will, and I will going to, we will circle back into that in just a second. First, we're going to dive into Ganesh. We're going to read about this from that other book I told you about the one about ascended masters. Um, guide to working with and he, a working a guide to working and healing with divinities and deities so here we go with ganesh uh ganesh is an elephant headed deity who removes obstacles for anyone who asks for his help he is the hindu god of prosperity and wisdom who also assists with writing and art projects many different stories abound that explain why ganesh has an elephant's head in most stories, Ganesh lost his head, perhaps because of his father's anger, and <clears throat> Ganesh's mother took the first head that she could find, a baby elephant's, and placed it on her son's neck. In Hinduism, Ganesh is the first deity c- contacted during prayers. It's recommended that you invoke Ganesh prior to conducting a ceremony, engaging in writing, or before any endeavor in which you want to succeed. Ganesh is extremely loving, sweet, polite, and gentle, yet so very strong. He's large enough to blaze trails ahead of you so that your path is clear, but he's also so filled with love and sweetness that you don't have to worry that his brute strength could turn against you. He's, um... He's Angelus to Archangel Michael in that he's a loving and loyal protective force. So really similar in their attributes and energies. And I totally feel that. Um, definitely different um, for sure. They're not like one in the same in any in any stretch of the imagination. They're very much different, different entities, different divine entities. But similar similar also similar to um jesus as as well um but in a in a different way (laughs) but but a lot of that same energy okay ganesh is called the remover of obstacles because he mows down any blocks that could stand in his path think of a tame elephant walking ahead of you on a trail trampling brush so that your way is clear that is ganesh (laughs) And he's saying, well, I'm not like tame is okay. That's an okay word, but it's kind of more like I'm your friend and I'm just walking ahead of you because that's the right thing to do because, um, there's, it's not like we're, it's not like I've been tamed. He says, he's like, I'm just a good friend and I'm going to clear the path for you because yes, that's the right thing to do. And and because I love you and I have the power to do so and because you have come to me uh, and we walk together, I walk ahead of you when there's obstacles. Otherwise, he says, we walk side by side and he also shows um, shows me us like us individually, those of us who connect with him, that we um will sit on top of him as well that we will he will extend his trunk down and allow us to come and sit on top of him um when we need extra help he says when we need extra help in getting past especially difficult times in our lives 
So in that sense, very similar. He like that. It's that same kind of saying about Jesus, like, oh, I only see one set of footprints. And Jesus is like, yeah, it's because I was carrying you. And you're like, oh, <laughs> same, same thing. This is what he's showing me. He's like, yeah, like that. He's like, but um, he's like, sometimes this is more about like getting things done and things getting in your way. Whereas Jesus is more like. Um, people tend to gravitate towards him when it's more the the essence of really truly needing a, a very like spiritual place to go to to be carried through um whereas Ganesh says yes I can do that too you can just sit right on top of me and, and lay down and go to sleep and I can carry you um, through your through your dreams and astral and take you through places that may be an obstacle there oh like just like the dreams that we've been talking about we've been talking about this is coming up been coming up a lot this is another um being turned to reminded about the um gosh when was that i did a podcast that's oh, really weird to just go from one one thing to another here i did a podcast about sleeping oh here we go um, episode number 55, Hour Sleep and Dream State During Chaotic Times, um, Sleep Wellness with COVID-19. I might need to do an update on that one uh, because it's come up a lot with people that I've been talking to in my lives and my clients and people that I know in, in my personal life just that sleep and, and just comments that I've seen in different places and on Twitter. This has just definitely been a thing. So he, anyway, he's saying back to Guinea, she's saying, um, yes. So in these times where there's a lot of fear coming up and there's obstacles even to get rest because of like stresses and, and things like this, um, I can definitely help you through those uh, these times in your sleep too. So you can call upon him before you go to sleep as well. And he will help you out in your dream state. Okay. Where were we here? Where was... Oh, here we go. Um, so she continues to write, <clears throat> this is page 80, by the way. She continues to write here. Um, I was having difficulty at airports at one time because security guards kept stopping me to open and search my carry on bags. Since my husband and I travel nearly every weekend, I quickly grew weary of these frequent suitcase searches. I wanted the security personnel to ignore me and just let me through without stopping me. So I placed a small statue of Ganesh in my carry-on bag. From that moment on, my bags were never again searched. Ganesh immediately comes to those who call upon him. For example, I was on the telephone talking with my friend Johanna, who... Um, or following the death of her mother. I was consoling her when I suddenly saw a clairvoyant image of Ganesh next to her. I said, Johanna, did you call upon Ganesh? And she answered, yes, I'm wearing a necklace with a medallion of Ganesh on it. I've been rubbing the picture all day, calling for Ganesh to be with me. Ganesh says, so now she's, um, she's, in, she's quoting uh, a channeling from him. Ganesh says, I see all obstacles to being surmountable. In fact, I don't see obstacles at all, and that's the point. All barriers in your path are self-imposed. They represent your decision to be afraid of moving forward. You cast your fear outward by projecting thoughts into the future, worried that either this or that may, be, may occur. Your worries about the future have created blocks and boogeymen that you will meet on your future path. But don't worry, since they're your own creation, you can will them away. Ask me to assist and I punctuate, or sorry, I puncture the balloons of dark illusions. Even if you've managed to manifest a worst case scenario, call upon me to heal and guide you. All thought forms are on a level playing field, and no matter how dire the appearance, they're all equally surmountable. I plow through them all quite easily with my unwavering faith and 
in all good, all love. That's the only power that exists. The rest are all unreal illusions. Let them go and know the truth of all situations. God and love always prevail. So, I mean, I was just giddy. And so after reading this a little bit ago, I was just like, oh my God, this this is just so beautiful. The way that this is all like falling together, how things are, are being laid out for me and my own discovery because while I've of course seen the uh the artwork and statues of Ganesh and Ganesha I never really have dove into to it I was never really guided until today so reading about Ganesh is really really cool for me and um and this whole thing about obstacles and illusions and the boogeyman that he talks about, no worries about the, no, your worries about the future have created blocks and boogeymen that you will meet on your future path. But don't worry, since they're your own creation, you can will them away. And this is what we talk about with the devil card. Uh, that comes up, actually that exact word, boogeyman, comes up in the other book. <laughs> And, um, it, when we, when we get into the devil card and what that is all about. So Ganesh is, so Ganesh and the devil card are very much, um, this 50, 50 force, right? So we have, and it's exactly 10 o'clock right now, 2200 on April 13th. So we have this 50-50 oppositional type force going on with the devil and with Ganesh because he's the one who says your obstacles are your illusion and everything about the devil is talking about illusionment, your, the, about fears and illusionment. So it's this is the devil card and it's basically this is the devil card, the fears and, and the illusionment. And then Ganesh comes in to say, I'm reminding you that, that it is illusion and you can call upon me as another person, another divine being in, at your disposal. Um to just like Michael, just like Jesus, just like any, any divine, divine being, God, deity that you connect to, that you know of, or get into the knowledge of just like I am with Amoria and Ganesh in these last, um, few days. And so, and this is what it's supposed to be like for all of us. We're all constantly learning. I I didn't grow up with any religion. Some people grew up you know, like really deep in, in one religion or or really um have gone into under uh, studying a lot of religions, but they're not very spiritual. And maybe they're just now becoming spiritual where I've been extraordinarily spiritual in my own way and I've just been guided and in, in in my own thing. Um, how it's how it's been pieced together instead of being all in on any one thing I just kind of like a butterfly truly just kind of flutter from this to that and piece it together as I'm guided and it all kind of makes sense we're going to continue with this um, I'm just going to finish this, the reading up here. So Ganesh helps with abundance, artistic projects, household peace and harmony, obstacles, removing and avoiding wisdom issues and writing and the, um, invocation here. She says, if you're unfamiliar with how Ganesh looks, find a picture of him in a book or on the internet. Once you're familiar with his visage, it's easy to call upon him by visualizing him in your mind and saying, Beloved Ganesh, thank you for soothing, smoothing my path today with harmony and peacefulness reigning supreme. I appreciate your walking before me, clearing all obstacles that could impede my progress. Help me see the blessings within everything today. Thank you. So you could say that or you could say whatever you want to say. <laughs> it doesn't have to be special. Just with any other any other divine being, it, there doesn't have to be anything special. You can just say, Ganesh, please come and be with me and help me clear the path of the obstacles that I'm dealing with today and 
help me be grateful for my <laughs> blessings and you know whatever comes to mind it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be anything special uh but he's reminding me to tell you guys that yeah it's great to uh before you get into artists anything of creational any any type of creational type energies that you're going to get into to call upon him uh if you're going to be writing if you're going to be creating anything uh, that is you know creational creative artistic so he can basically kind of push away things that might come in to distract you because that can tend to happen as soon as you start getting into something all of a sudden something comes up and you're like come on I finally got here you know you're painting you're drawing you're, whatever it is you're creating you're you're sculpting you're making you're a maker of some sort let's just put it that way even if it's writing or whatever sometimes their outside forces tend to come into play to pull you away from these things and he says basically what I do is is I kind of keep a perimeter around you that makes it difficult to penetrate unless it's really um he's like I kind of am like the gate ga the gatekeeper to you I keep things at bay so you know I'll only let things through that's really important that needs your attention otherwise I'm going to keep other people busy I'm going to keep your your kids busy your animals busy for a good amount of time so you could spend he's like of course choose your time wisely um and 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 you can multiply the energies because I'm going to make time kind of last longer we're going to have a longer state of um well we already know that when we get into creational spaces we have kind of we enter this as zero point time frame kind of thing we're at a zero point zero point is really the ideal place in in space and time and creation this is where we where we kind of like to balance in meditation at some point the zero point where you're just suspended and um time is suspended and you can get there also by being creational and so this is why people say like i've been writing and i was writing for six hours and i had no idea that that was going on <laughs> that much time had gone on or i was painting and then i just couldn't stop and i was going and going and going and but time just kind of stood still or it went by so fast you know just it's this weird suspension of, of time that happens when you're creational and um it's good to not get interrupted with that so Ganesha's basically he's showing me himself just kind of like walking around you and just really creating this barrier of, of energy so you can uh focus and not be interrupted so he that's a, really why he's really great with artistic projects because it's about when you get creational you're create you're connecting with mother father god you're you're connecting with your with your higher self with your soul self it's divine union it's all it's spiritual so <laughs> spiritual beings like to help you with spiritual projects and so when you're creational you're being spiritual and when you're spiritual you can call on these different these different um entities and deities and gods and and archangels and so whatever you're you're feeling at the time you know um I it's just so funny to for me I was just like well no wonder I've always been so into elephants <laughs> I mean not only do I love elephants you know and honestly feel like I've spent probably more than one lifetime as an elephant um uh, on different continents uh but I uh but just the, every time I'd ever seen that the image of Ganesh it's always been very um what's the word I guess comforting yeah I've liked it even though I've never really dove deep into I, I just, it just hasn't been a thing for me to really go what is that about I just I know it's a Hindu god there's a billion of them <laughs> and it's like okay you know like there's not just the one there's lots of them and so 
Um, it just, it feels like a really big thing. Um, and, but because I also know that he's like one of the most popular ones, uh, that, that there's just always been something about that too. So anyway, uh, that just came to me as I was reading about him and I was just like, oh, how funny this whole like elephant head thing. And I think about all the different elephant things that I have. I don't have a Ganesh specific statue or anything, but I have many things that are elephants around like, like a statue. I do have a, a carved crystal statue of an elephant and I have, I have my own drawings of elephants and I have, um, uh, just different artwork and and things that have been given to me that are elephants I love I absolutely love elephants and I just never really connected the two but it makes a lot of sense now uh why this is and then and then not only that just like why this is he's coming up right now why this whole thing is coming up right now household peace and harmony I mean, come on who doesn't need household peace and harmony dur during a, a, a lockdown uh, a shelter in place, quarantine, whatever you want to, we're not in quarantine. Everybody calls it quarantine, but it's not quarantine. Um, <laughs> it's just a, it's stay at home during a stay at home during a pandemic. Uh, people are having, there's like the higher divorce rates than ever that typically these are people that are already going to get divorced. They just hadn't gotten there yet. Now they're really getting there. Uh, but just to have better, household harmony with the people that you're having to be around all the time and hopefully you're taking a good amount of time to be by yourself and establishing some boundaries and some like this is my alone time this is your alone time this is just the way it's the best way to, <clears throat> to do that and then of course if you're feeling Ganesh and he's somebody who um as you look into him and tomorrow we're going to be doing the um the Stargate landing day at 4.30 and we're going to be doing a meditation with Ganesh. So I'm not sure what that's going to entail, but he's like, we're going to do a meditation and it's about clearing obstacles. It's about all this stuff. It's about abundance, clearing obstacles, removing and avoiding any obstacles, peace and harmony within the home and around you. Um, bringing in more connection uh, for your soul wisdom and of course artistic projects and writing so anything creative and writing he's getting into that so we're gonna so it's gonna be about all of that fortifying he's saying fortifying kind of the um, the foundation the base He's just showing me him his like walking on the earth and his vibrations kind of radiating up. But that also connecting for those of us who've done the shielding that I talked about earlier with El Moria, that somehow connecting to that. So that's what I'm seeing right now. I don't really know the gist of it and everything that's going to happen. I never do. So we get there and they come in and we do our work. Another thing I wanted to tie back into with the devil card is I looked it up earlier because I was like, oh, the moon is in Capricorn. The Capricorn is associated with the devil card. We've been going into the devil card and I, I looked that up a bit here. Um, and I just clicked on, this is at tarot.com. A taste of tarot, Capricorn, and the devil. A look at the symbolism of Capricorn's tarot card, the devil. So it says every zodiac sign is ruled by a tarot card from the major arcana. The zodiac sign of Capricorn is ruled by the devil card. Here we take a look at the symbolic connections between status driven Capricorn and the devil. Um. Capricorn and the Mountain of Achievements. Capricorn is represented by the powerful and determined mountain goat, strong-willed and ambitious. This sign is considered the business person of the Zodiac, and they will stop at nothing to achieve their goals. And while these individuals are great leaders, 
loyal friends and excellent lovers, their obsession with status and success can sometimes get them into trouble. Capricorn and the devil. The devil is one of the most misunderstood cards of the tarot deck. If you look a little closer, the figure in the card is not a representation of Satan, but rather the card depicts Pan, the half man, half goat nature, guard, nature god. Like Pan, who is often depicted chasing nymphs, the devil card is associated with temptation and sexuality. Capricorns are always driven to strive for more, for the best, which means that they are rarely satisfied with what they have. Like bats, notice the large bat wings on this figure, Capricorns are often in danger of being manipulative and using others while climbing their way to the top. In parentheses here, I'm going to talk, I'm going to say just real quick when we get into the devil card in that, in that episode, um, we talk about how there's that association to, um, to our president, Donald Trump. So he's very much in, in the, in integral into what's going on with our timelines right now and, and his kind of persona and kind of what what he represents it's not all about him but but definitely it's associated with him <clears throat> okay here we go um and manipulative and using others while climbing their way to the top okay ultimately the devil card is about feeling trapped or stuck that's shown by the slaves in chains in the foreground Conservative Capricorn is ruled by Saturn, the planet of limitations and structure. But here's the twist. The chains are actually quite loose, implying that the slaves could leave if they really wanted to. So that's talking again about illusionment, that that your chains are your fears, are is the chains that you're when you're chained up like that, but it's not it's not real. So that's, you know, taking us back to what Ganesh said. Um Similarly, Capricorns may feel restricted by the expectations of those around them and their own expectations of themselves. But in the end, they always have the opportunity for freedom and change. So there's a little bit about how this is just kind of circular with where we've been these last few days. Uh, so I wanted to tie that in for everybody and just give a little preview to what we're going to be working on in our live tomorrow at four o'clock Pacific, the 14th, our landing day of the Stargate. And uh, <clears throat> we are going to be doing the usual um, with an energy update and general tarot reading. We're definitely going to do a tarot reading for, um, for the collective coming out and getting into the next phase of our, of our month, <coughs> excuse me, of our month. So we have first phase is that 10 days of, uh, of like we have different phases of our Stargate. So first phase is, is the fourth through the 14th. And then our second phase is the, um, 15th through the 25th and then the the third is always getting into that to that next stargate phase one so it's kind of like a phase three slash phase one getting into the next stargate and in there we're going to have another moon event which would be the new moon so, but without getting too far ahead of ourselves, tomorrow we're going to be getting into the um, uh, energy update for what's going on right now with the landing day and what, what kind of what we got a recap of the Stargate and kind of happenings uh, in these last 10 days, what to look for in the future for the this next 10 days, we're going to get into the tarot with the Hermetic Tarot, I already known that already was shown that and um, we're definitely going to do a meditation with Ganesh and who knows what else uh, and then I will be doing one card reads for uh, the first like five people in attendance I can't do too many because I, I can spend like 15 20 minutes with each of these so um, I don't rush it I just go with what you know kind of with what comes 
So we just don't want it to go too, too long. There's a possibility that after whatever meditation I do that I might be up to doing cards. Uh, yesterday after the Easter one, I definitely wasn't and nobody else was either. either. Everybody was feeling really sleepy um, and and we were just done after the meditation. So, but you just never know, never know. The one before that on the full moon, I was up another five hours and I did a bunch of reads. So it's like, who knows? Who knows what's gonna happen? So, but we are starting at four o'clock Pacific. So join us if you can. Definitely circle back to the meditation. If you can't, then um, do that when you can. Otherwise, I think that is it, everybody. I'll leave you with some kalimba. Thanks for being here, you guys. Thanks for taking a listen to this episode. I hope to see you tomorrow for the live event at 4 o'clock on my YouTube channel, Infinite Love Light Energy. Love you already and always.